Hello and welcome to To Dada in Memoriam by Pauli Marshall. We will start off with a summary of the short story. So this is an autobiographical story told from the point of view of an adult looking back on a childhood memory. So it's a flashback. The story opens as the nine-year-old narrator, along with, her mother, <clears throat> along with her mother and sister, disembarks from a boat that has brought them to Bridgetown in Barbados. And she describes Barbados as the alien sight and sounds of Barbados. Sorry, she describes Bridge, Bridgetown and when she arrives as the alien sight and sounds of Barbados. It is 1937 and the family has come to visit Barbados from their home in Brooklyn, which is in New York City. And they've left behind the father who believed it was a waste of money to take the trip. The narrator's mother first left Barbados 15 years ago, so in 1922. And she left her family in Barbados to move to the States. And this is the first time that the narrator, Pauli Marshall, has ever been to Barbados. She therefore has never met her grandmother, Dada. Although an old woman, the narrator's grandmother, Dada, is lively and sharp. And when she meets her grandchildren for the first time, she examines them closely. You can just imagine this old woman standing back, looking them up and down and critiquing them. She calls the narrator's older sister Lucky because she has lighter skin, but she silently looks at the narrator, calling her fierce. So right from the very beginning, they have a relationship that is um, different than the other, than her sister. She takes the narrator by the hand and leads the family outside of the area where the boat has arrived, where the rest of the relatives are waiting. <clears throat> the family gets into the truck that takes them through Bridgetown and back to Dada's home in St. Thomas. Both um, Bridgetown and St. Thomas are towns in Barbados. The next day after they have arrived, Dada takes the narrator out to show her the land which is covered with fruit orchards and sugarcane. So at this time, lots of Barbados was covered in sugarcane because this was their biggest export. And Dada asks the narrator if there is anything as nice in Brooklyn as this view, the um, trees with all, all of the fruits on there and the sugar cane and the narrator says no. Dada says that she's heard that there are no trees in New York but then she asks the narrator to describe snow because obviously living in Barbados Dada has never seen or experienced snow before but the narrator living in New York has. The visit is an interesting one in which Dada and the protagonist, Pauli Marshall, develop a caring yet competitive relationship. And this competition is established between them, between youth, the narrator, and age, the grandmother, between modernity, the narrator, and tradition the grandmother, and between New York and Barbados. While the Caribbean is unfamiliar to the young girl who sees it as some dangerous place, Dada wants to show off its qualities. She's really proud of where she comes from and she wants the narrator, her granddaughter, to also love her place. And don't forget that this is also where uh, the narrator's ancestry has come from. Dada introduces her to the riches of Barbados, which is its nature. It's a beautiful place and 
um, Dada shows this off. While the protagonist, Pauli Marshall, introduces her grandmother to the steel and concrete world of New York, the industrialism. She talks about the Empire State Building in particular. Dada, however, is dealt a blow when she learns about the Empire State Building, which was many stories taller than the highest thing that she has ever seen in her life, which is Bicex Hill in Barbados. And she thought that this was the biggest thing that could ever exist. But then she learns about how much bigger the Empire State Building is. And she's not happy about this. In fact, so much so that she lost a little bit of her spark that day, the day that she found out about the existence of the Empire State Building. And she was not given a chance to rebound because the protagonist left to go home to New York shortly after. The story progresses with the death of Dada during the famous 1937 airstrike on Barbados. Dada had refused to leave her home when the aeroplanes came in and she was later found dead on a Burbis chair by her window. The young narrator's triumph is tempered at the end of the story by the shadow of Dada's death. She was deeply moved by her grandmother's death shortly after she left Barbados. In fact, the protagonist, Pauli Marshall, spent a brief, spends a brief period in penance. That means trying to make up for her sins, which was introducing the idea of the Empire State Building and modernity and everything that that brings to her grandmother. And she does this by living as an artist and painting landscapes that were reminiscent of Barbados, that looked like and reminded her of Barbados. The setting of this story to Dadara Memoriam. It's an integral setting, which means that it couldn't have taken place in any other um, location. And also it is described in detail. <clears throat> so as mentioned, it takes place in 1937 during Pauli Marshall's childhood. It is Bridgetown in Barbados, should be a comma there and a little village called St. Thomas, which is where Dada lives. It is a land full of fruit orchards and sugar canes. New York is also described by the narrator, although um, really that only comes in as a setting towards the end of the story when she returns home and learns about the death of her grandmother. The narrator also talks about the Empire State Building, the loud noises of construction work in New York, and the cold winter weather on the east side, the east side of New York. The structure of the story. The structure is a flashback. It is um, a memory of the narrator, who is also the author, because this is autobiographical. So it's a memory of when she was a young girl. At the end of, it's only at the end of the story that we understand that it is a flashback, because we meet the narrator in adulthood, looking back at this as a memory. It's the point of view. It's first person narration and it's an autobiographical story. Most of the story is told from when Marshall is, was a child. However, the narrator is the only voice that the reader hears and the only eyes that we see through. Why do you think this is important? How would it have been different 
if we had also seen the encounter through the eyes of Dada. Imagine if we had heard what Dada thought of the narrator when she first stepped off the boat. Imagine what we would have learned and felt if we had seen this competition through the eyes of both the narrator and Dada. Would that have changed anything of the story? Would that have um, made us connect with um, Dada and the narrator? Although actually I think we do connect with Dada through the eyes of um, the narrator. But would that have changed? Would the uh, a different point of view have changed our understanding at all? Something to think about. Towards the end of the story, the narrator pulls back and says what happened <clears throat> when her and her family left Barbados at the end of their holiday. She explains that the riots in Barbados and the aeroplanes and her grandmother's death was told from when she was older. And this point at the end of the story, it becomes more factual and less personal than when she is describing her time in Barbados. Also towards the very end of the story, Marshall feels sorrow about how she treated her grandmother and reveals how she feels about the connection to her past and her ancestry. And I think there's a message in here about how we treat our elders and the fact that we have a lot to learn from them and that we should always show them respect and remember that they're not going to be around forever. So the characters in this story, two main characters. Uh, we'll start with the narrator, who is the protagonist. She is a round character, which means that she is described in detail. She is described as a thin little girl. She's nine years old, and she most certainly has a strong personality. We can see this when she first meets Dada. We can see this when she is competitive with Dada. We can see this when she talks about having a fight back in New York with a white girl at school, um, which would have been a big thing for a black girl to have a fight with a white girl in 1937 New York. She is competitive in nature, and this is seen throughout the story. She is proud of New York and where she comes from, where she's grown up, where her family live. But at the end of the story, she's also proud of her Barbadian ancestry. She represents um, the modern in this story and she also has a special relationship with Dada. We don't necessarily know whether the sis the younger sister and Dada bonded as much as the protagonist and Dada, um, but we assume not. Again, Dada is a round character. She is described in detail. She is the narrator's 80 year old grandmother and she has lived her whole life on the island of Barbados and is confident and proud of her lifestyle, her surroundings and her way of looking at the world. She doesn't like the modern world, like machinery and is even uncomfortable in the city of Bridgetown, which probably wasn't that big in comparison to New York. When Dada first meets the narrator, Marshall imagines that she saw something in me which for some reason she found disturbing. However, Dada also feels connected to her granddaughter, which can be seen when she takes hold of her hand on the lorry.